Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and in today's video I'm going to take this unmachined wing nut and I'm going to drill it and then I'm going to tap it Acme 3 quarter 6. So that's the job today. Here is the tooling that I will be using. I'll be on the closing 12 inch lathe and this particular nut is unmachined so when purchased you could, uh, and it's plated, I believe it to be cast iron, and we can drill it and tap it any size we want, but in this case, three quarter, six is required. Over to the 12 inch closing lathe, and this can be gripped in a three jaw chuck. This item is called a general purpose Acme wing nut, the ball type. And they sell it pre-threaded for about $35, but I have one that is rough cast and can be machined to any size that you desire. I always like to lay out my cutting tools before I start. A starter drill, quarter inch, half inch, 39 64 and there's the 3 quarter 6 Acme tap. Okay, here's the setup. The work is held in a three jaw. A four jaw would be fine also, but this is going to be kind of scary and dangerous. So if I turned it on right now, you could see the ball would strike the machine here. So I will back this off just a little bit and I'm going to lock the carriage so I do not inadvertently move it and uh, have a crash or an accident. And uh, this is scary if you had a, a loose shirt on. Never you never should have loose sleeves or anything like that, but a rag or what what could all get caught in there. But to, for my own safety and a suggestion to you, I'm going to put this guard here in a position about like this. The camera's at a funny angle here, but I, I'm protected so that I won't put my hand in there. I'm not worried about the chips. This is a chip guard, but that's just so I don't run my hand in there. So now I'm ready. For the starter drill. Always rotate the machine by hand before you put it under power to make sure that the workpiece will clear and that's pretty good so let's drill. I can hear it in the comments now. Your hole is off center, it's wobbling. You should have bored it. Yeah, maybe I should have, but remember this is just a nut. But if I had it to do over, I would use this heavy duty combination starter drill instead of that little quarter inch. You could see that it was trying to find the center, or perhaps I should have faced that. You know, there's all kinds of other advice I'm sure I'm going to get and probably is good advice but before I start tapping it this is over two inches long and it's going to be a real struggle to run a big tap like this through there by hand so to reduce the effort I'm going to drill oversize that is this is a quarter inch or three quarter this is three quarter inch which is the diameter of the tap so it's really a clearance size so I'll go in about a half inch or so. It'll just make it a little bit easier to tap that by hand. This is a brand new three quarter six tap Acme. Now there's tremendous load on these teeth. So the construction of these taps, as you can see here, it's tapered clear from the end up to about this black mark to reduce the amount of effort and to reduce the chance of breaking the tap. Only when we get up to about here are the teeth full depth and actually probably about right here. I'm not going to take the time to measure it, but all of that is tapered to uh, make it easier and remember this is the Armstrong method so we'll see how it goes. The material is cast, cast iron which is relatively soft. My tailstock center is spring-loaded, 
Now look closely as I insert it into the uh, center hole of the tap and start to put pressure on it. Can you see what's happening there? So this is ideal for tapping because I can probably go a full turn before I have to advance the hand wheel in just a little bit. But these are extremely expensive. Concentric is the brand. This is a hand operation, but I have the machine in back gears to lock the spindle. And here we go. A tap wrench will not fit in here. So I have to use an adjustable. And I'm feeding the hand wheel of the tailstock as I do this, but that's not in the camera range. Well, I had to bring in the heavy artillery. This little uh, 10 inch isn't going to do it at all. Also, I'm going to try some of this material here, which says it's okay on cast iron. So, I knew this would be difficult, but didn't know how difficult. Well, I've made some progress, as you can see here, and I've actually worked up a sweat, and it's about 10 minutes worth of tapping so far. It's getting a little easier, but not much. Okay, let's finish it up here. You can only see about one tooth left, but we're still cutting in here a little bit, but it's getting a lot easier. And I could put it in the bench vise now with a large tap wrench on here, but then I'd leave vise marks on the work, so I'm going to finish up this way. But there's always many ways of doing things, that's my point. Well, I wanted a test thread so I can see if it will truly screw in. So I borrowed this screw from a Peterson Products <laughs> vise. You've seen this many times. So that means that this was made in my class. The date is 1985. It was made in the class. And will it fit? And it does. So what I want to do now is face off the end here. So in order to do that, I'll remove the handle and hold this in the three-jaw chuck like this and just skim face the, uh, the end of the casting. And this is cast iron. It's nice. I found it necessary to put a collar right here, my finger is on it, something like this, to space this out from the chuck because the ball ends here we're interfering just a little bit. So it's going to machine real nicely now, and I am supported by a center. I don't know if I really need it. Let me reposition the camera because the tool is right down here. I'm just going to face it off very lightly enough to true it up. And yes, there's a little wobble here. Do we care? No. Remember, this is just a nut. And I am machining a rough casting, which isn't necessarily true. Plus, my initial uh, 
the center drill was not the best either. So those things go together and uh, and uh, you, know, you can see the wobble, but again, we don't care. And why did I face it? Because that makes this surface perfectly perpendicular with the threaded hole. And there it is. Well, absolutely no one in the entire world will ever do this operation, and I'm fully aware of that, but using uh, some of the ideas and setups that I have here in your own shop may help you over the years, because uh, it's just an interesting project. How are you going to hold it? How are you going to do it? Now, you darn near have to have an expensive tap. To do this with a boring bar and a smaller hole like that would be difficult and maybe even impossible. So you got to buy the tap, and most people can't afford that, so generally you would buy this from the McMaster car catalog like I showed you earlier in the video. Well, if you liked the video, let me know and give me a thumbs up and watch some of my other videos, and I hope to see you again in more of my videos. So long for now, this is Mr. Pete. And by the way, never use a file like I showed you a minute or two earlier. Very dangerous.